Thank you. I just want you to go to Matthew 22, where we read in the morning. Matthew 22. Uh, where we read in the morning. Straight from. It was about the wedding. 1 to 14. 14. 1 to 14. Okay. Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 1 to yeah. 14, KJV. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, tell them which, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed, the, and, and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment, and he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. 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 Okay. I thought you couldn't hear me. Thank you for reading for us. The title of our teaching tonight is Make Your Calling Sure. Make Your Calling Sure. Hallelujah. It's the same word we spoke about in the morning. It's the word that is speaking to our faith. A lot of people have asked uh, questions. You know, where we read in Matthew 22, for those who did not attend the morning service, we spoke about the invitation to the wedding. Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he was talking in parables. And we said parables, they are not directed to a particular person. Parables are meant to provoke your thought process. They are meant for you to, to think, you know, to put it into application, what could be going on here. And in that story, as Apostle Mike read, we see that Jesus equated the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, as a wedding banquet where people were invited. Obviously, with any banquet, any party, the closest get invited first get the first invitations. And we are told that they did not accept the invitation. They denied the invitation. Some of them, they just ignored, but some of them, 
they just carried on with their work. Some, they beat up the messengers. They killed the messengers. And the Bible says, the vengeance of the king was you know, it was, he was angered. He was, his anger was teared up. And the Bible says he requested for those nations. <laughs> uh, he sent his armies. Can you read that again, Apostle Mike, where he says he sent the army. You know, to those nations, those people that killed that is verse 7. Mm -hmm. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Amen. Hallelujah. He sent his armies. He destroyed their cities. Everything that we are reading is prophetic and it's happening even right now. The banquet is the kingdom of heaven, which all of us have been invited. You know, a lot of people used to ask this question or to look down upon themselves and say, you know, when you say some are chosen or everyone is called, but a few are chosen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And some people, maybe you are there and you have always been asking this question, am I chosen? Are you chosen? Maybe I should ask you that question. Are you chosen? Yes. A lot of people confuse this scripture and they think that probably the chosen are just those who are ministering, those who are going to be evangelists, those who are going to be pastors, and those who are going to be serving in church in one department or another. So they, they thought those are the ones that are chosen. That is error. That is error of doctrine. When the Bible talks as many are called, a few are chosen. <laughs> ah, the chosen. When you are chosen, your, your spirit is receptive to the word of God. Your spirit accepts the word of God. Here we see that a lot of people were invited. Those who were close, they were invited, but they did not accept. And then when the king saw that people he thought would come did not come, he sent his messengers and said, just go, just call anybody, anyone who accepts this to come to this party, let him come. This is where and you come in. I said that it was, the, it was the Jews. It was the people who were, you know, the same nation with Jesus Christ when he was born as the child of Mary and Joseph in that community. Those people were called. Those people were invited. Jesus preached among them. He prophesied among them, but they did not. They did not believe him. It is in the same place that they crucified him, that they despised him, that they spat on him because they did not accept him. The Bible tells us that the invitation was now extended to those who were outside anywhere, any nation, any tribe, which is you and me. The good news was sent to us. 
So all of us have been invited to this banquet. All of us have been called. The difference is in our hearts. Do you accept the gospel or do you deny the gospel? Remember, the Bible says that our mothers and fathers, they conceived us in sin. They conceived us in iniquity. So without Jesus, we are sinners. Without this blood that cleanses and sanctifies us, we are sinners. But when we accept Jesus Christ, now we are now called heirs to the kingdom of heaven. We now qualify because we've accepted the invitation and we've accepted it with our hearts, not just with our lip service. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about those who worship me, they will worship me in truth and in spirit. It also talks about whilst we were sinners, whilst we were out there doing our farming, doing our idol worship, doing whatever we were doing, Christ went ahead and died for us. This now comes to this equi equation or to this story as the, the bulls that were killed, the everything that was prepared for the feast so that we can have access. We can have access because the work has already been done. We can have access because Jesus has come and has already died. We can have access because the party is ready for us to partake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So the invitation is coming to you. The invitation is coming to everyone. Everybody is called. Whether you are chosen or not, this is now inside your heart. Do you accept the gospel? Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Are you willing to follow him? Are you willing to do what it takes to be called a disciple? That is what it is. Or are you going to be like the man who was found in the party but not wearing the suitable garments? This is a man who did not make their calling sure where we have spoken. Make your calling sure. We don't have to be asking these questions, am I chosen? If you have said yes to Jesus, you are chosen. All you need to do is continue to abide, continue to remain connected on the vine because you are the branch. Then you can bear the fruits that will last forever. Am I chosen? Am I chosen? You know, some people even thought like, wow, there's no need for me to go to church. I'm not chosen. <laughs> let the pastors and them people that have been chosen, let them go. But here Jesus is saying, the banquet is ready. The invitation is open to everyone. You know, our hearts are hardened because we were born in iniquity. But the grace of God is the one that enables us, is the one that puts us in a place where we can be able to receive the gospel. The fact that you and me are saved is not by our choice. We are chosen. We are chosen because we accepted the, the, the gospel. Our hearts are receptive to the gospel. 
And when we go into the book of Second Peter where we read, it talks about making your calling sure. Mm -hmm. And how do you make your calling sure? Mm -hmm. How do you make your calling sure? This is where we need to come to the word of God. Mm -hmm. This is where we need to nurture and build our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. We cannot be sure of our calling if we don't understand the word, if we don't study the word, if we don't meditate on the word. How can we be sure? Make your calling sure. Study the word of God. Meditate on it day and night. Joshua 1.8. This book of life, the book of life, this is where you find Jesus Christ revealed in the book of life. Every scripture, every topic, it reveals Jesus. You know, I used to wonder, why is Abraham called, it was called unto him righteousness? You know, when you get a revelation about why it was accorded to him as righteousness, I want you, Apostle Mike, to look uh, at the scriptures and find where it says it was accorded to uh, Abraham as righteousness. This was not because Abraham was walking upright with God. No, it was because when Abraham believed that God will give him an heir of his, out of his own belly. Not Ishmael, not the other one, not any other child, but Isaac. Isaac now stands as a representation for Jesus Christ. You remember Isaac was taken to Mount Moriah <laughs> to be sacrificed and there the lamb appeared. This was the faith that God was going to give him the heir. Is That's why he was, it was accorded to him as righteousness. Hallelujah. Now Jesus is saying to you, the banquet is open. Do not ask these questions. Am I called? Am I chosen? God is the one who softens our hearts so that we can be able to accept the gospel. There are some people <laughs> who were created unto destruction. No matter how you preach to them, no matter how much you try to tell them about Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. they will tell you something else. They will find an excuse. They will always find an excuse. But listen, you and me, we have been called and we have been chosen because God made our hearts to be receptive to the gospel. The enemy is now just coming to fight what has already been done, what is there. This is why you need to make your calling sure by resisting the enemy, resisting the devil, walking in righteousness, and so that, you know, the name of God can be glorified. Righteousness has been, salvation has been accorded to you for nothing. It's a free gift. It is a free gift. Nobody has got to pay anything. Nobody has got to do anything to qualify for this invitation. All you need to say is yes. My soul say yes to the Lord. My soul say yes to Jesus. My soul say yes to the Holy Spirit. My soul say yes. 
Say yes. Say yes. Say yes to the Lord. Say yes to the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about after everything else is done, only three things will last. Just three things. Those things are faith, it's love, and hope. Those three things, those are the three things that we need to hold on to. What is it that is drawing you back? Lack of faith, you have lost hope, you have lost your love for Christ. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. Hold on, keep running the race. Like the Apostle Paul says, he will continue to run the race. He will not allow himself to be distracted, to look to the left or to the right, but continue to look focused. My brothers and sisters, one thing we need to understand is we are living in the last days. Whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, we are living in the last days. I try not to listen to a lot of stuff that can mix me up, get me mixed up. But if you are one of those people who listen to different conspiracies and things that are going, or even going into the Bible and look onto the scriptures, you can see that those things that were spoken, they are being revealed one by one, one after another. One after another. So it is high time, my brother, my sister, that we work on making our calling sure. We work on walking in righteousness. We continue to hold on to Jesus Christ, who is the vine. You know, the woman at the Samaritan pool, she says, give me this water this living water, so that I will not have to go and thirst again. This should be our spiritual position. Give me this water. Give me this Holy Spirit. Fill me up once again. If there is anything in my spirit, in my soul, any iniquity, any pride, anything, Lord, empty me. Empty me, Lord. Empty me. Hallelujah. Empty me so that I can be able to walk in righteousness. Empty me so that my calling can be sure. Empty me so that I can be able to be a walking episode. That when people read my life, when people look at me, they can look at Jesus. Hallelujah. looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, we have, called, we have been called to this special banquet. Yes, we can see that people who are taking the gospel out, they are being tortured, they are being tormented, they are being killed. This is exactly the example that was spoken in Matthew 22. The messengers were killed. The messengers were persecuted. But we can see even the nations that reject God, even in this day, we can see this prophecy being pro fulfilled. Amen. We can see it. Many nations have been saved because there are a few people who have believed. A few people who are holding on. A few people who are interceding. But those nations that completely denied the gospel, the virgins of God, we can still witness it. It's prophetic. It's not my words. It's not my wish. But it's God's word. This is the word of God we are reading here. 
it is the Bible, it is the, the inspired word of God that we are talking about here. It is the prophecies that we are talking about here that are being revealed. Praise Jesus. Therefore, brothers, be all the more, be all the more, when we know that we are living in the last day, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. That's where we read Second Peter 1 verse 10. We all know the scripture in Matthew 20, 16 that says, if the last will be the first, then the first will be the last. We can see that the people to which the gospel were extended to first, they denied the gospel. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 13, 13 and 14 Matthew 7, 13 and 14. It says, enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. Many people are like that person who accepted the invitation, but he did not completely do what the gospel, what the word of God tell them to do. The person accepted the invitation, went to the party, but they did not dress up as expected for the occasion. This is where we see our lip service going to church for social, going to church so that my friend can be happy because she invited me, going to party to church because pastor called me. No, you don't need any pastor to call you to say, we have service today. You don't need any evangelist to knock on your door to say, today there is revival. The flyers have gone out. What are you waiting for? For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few very few i pray that may we be counted among the few among the few that will find the way narrow is the path narrow is the path May God help us that we are willing. May God make our hearts willing, willing to walk in that narrow path. Because most of the time, we want to go where everyone is going, the wider path. But the Bible is telling us right now that narrow is the path that leads to heaven. A few people are going to walk through that path. And if those days had not been cut short, no human would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Mm -hmm. You see where we are going. Where we are going, we are going in a world of confusion confusion where we don't know people are saying i don't know if i'm a girl or i'm a boy i don't know if i do this or do that confusion but god is saying because of the those that are chosen because of the elect because of those that their hearts have been prepared to accept the gospel, those that have been called and accepted, those who are going to enter the kingdom of heaven, God is going to cut short the days. He's going to cut short because if it continues, everybody is going to drown. We can see what's happening every, every day right now. Everything has got to be politically correct. 
a time shall come when we could we, we may not be able to preach the way I am preaching. Even here I'm preaching on Zoom. If we were on an open platform, you can even find some people trying to find offense in this message. We are living in the last days. This is the days to drink as much water as we can, eat as much bread as we can, so that we may never thirst again. When that time comes, when the gospel is no longer be preached, when we are going to be confined in our homes and not be able to go out at all. If you go out, if you read Bible, if you come on Zoom, you are going to be prosecuted. What are you going to hold on to? This is the word that we need to hold on to. These are the scripture we need to meditate on because then we will not be in fear because we know exactly what is happening. We know that God is cutting the days short for our sake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We magnify your holy name. You are faithful, Lord. You are worthy of our praises. You are worthy of our worship. We give you all the praise and all the honor. We honor your holy name, O oh Jesus. Help us that we do not fall into sin. Even in these last days, O oh God, Close our minds to something that may just be destructive, that we may focus on you, that we may focus on hearing you, that we may focus on making our calling sure, focusing on studying and meditating the, on the word of God, focusing on our prayer life, holding on to our hope and on to the faith that we profess. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Revelation 17, 14, it says, they will make war on the lamb and the lamb will conquer them for he is the Lord of lords and the king of kings and those with him are called and chosen and faithful. Thank you, Jesus. They will make war. They are making war right now. You can see how the scriptures are being twisted. You can see the children are be not, now not be allowed to call their mother, mother, the, or father, father. They are called, they are used to say, just to say parent. They will make war. They will make war on the lamb. And the lamb will conquer them. For he is Lord. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. And those with him are called and are chosen and are faithful. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that leave us on that place where we are faithful, that we will remain faithful to the end, oh God. Some of us are being persecuted for this gospel, Lord, but we have the liberty to preach this gospel freely. We have the liberty to hear this word every day. We have the liberty even to miss a session. Oh, he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the one and only God. He is the beginning and the end. We know that at the, at the mention of his name, we know that every knee shall bow every knee shall bow, every mouth shall confess that Jesus Christ is, is Lord. 
The Bible talks about as the disciples saw him ascend into heaven and there was an angel, two angels came to them and they say, men of, men of Galilee, what are you looking at? Ah, and the Bible talks about the same way he was taken to heaven is the same way we are going to see him ascend to come and judge the dead and the living and the dead. Brothers and sisters, let us make our calling sure. This is not about prophetess. This is not about Elizabeth, watch, that's me. This is not about Harry, my husband, the pastor. This is not about anybody. This is about you, your soul, and God. Because the persecution is coming, brothers and sisters. The persecution is coming. It is coming. The persecution is coming. I know we have seen persecution and we are saying it's there and we are seeing prophets, but the persecution that is prophesied here is coming. A time will come when we cannot be on Zoom. When Zoom is going to be censored, what you come to talk on Zoom. That is if at all it's going to be allowed. When we started this year, nobody knew that we would be here on Zoom every day. Nobody knew that we would not be able to be in the church building. It was not public knowledge. It was not even imaginable. Neither was it believable that people could be locked in their houses and told not to go anywhere, not to go and see your poly mother. Who needs your love and your hug? Nobody knew that. Right now we have a lot of elderly people that are living alone, but they have got nobody to come and see them. Some of them, they are not competent enough to use any social media to be able to communicate with their families. And they are stuck there by themselves. And that's okay. That's okay by, the, by our leaders, by the people who rule this world. That's okay. Mm. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, that's not okay. Your elderly mother, your sick mother, your sick brother, your sick sister, they need you. They need this word. They need you to preach to them. They need you to encourage to them. But how can we do that if we ourselves are empty? We need to make our calling sure. We need to make our calling sure. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for this word, O oh God. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that speaks to us even when we are not sure what he's going to speak. But we know that when he comes, he comes with a word that is powerful. He comes with a word that we need. He comes with a revelation and prophetic word that we need. I don't know what we are going to do, to, to do with the prophecy of telephone numbers and figures. No, this is the prophetic word that we need. The things that we need to prepare about the things about the kingdom of God that we need to know about, the things that we will have time when no one, no prophet, no pastor will be there to tell you these things. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to pray where you are. You have heard the word. You know the areas of your life that this word has touched. Maybe it has reminded you to repent in certain areas of your life. Maybe it has provoked you to study more on the word of God. Maybe it has just, you know, revived your spirit and maybe assure you that you are chosen so that you can be able to have that confidence that God has chosen you. Just begin to pray. Pray and appreciate God. Just appreciate God for this word. 
we thank you, Holy Spirit. Whatever the Lord has spoken to you, just continue to pray. Appreciate him. Hold on to faith. Hold on to the love of God. Hold on to your hope. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. God is good. He said, when you hear this word, when you hear my word, do not harden your hearts. Brothers and sisters, it's not a time to harden our hearts. It's not a time to think about ourselves. It's not a, th a time for lip service. It's not a time to do things so that prophetess can see me or people can see me. It's not a time to do things for the sake of doing things. It's a time for us to worship God with every act of your service, to worship God with everything that you have got, with everything that is within you, with everything that is in your being, with all the resources that you have. It is a time to worship God. It is not time to listen to news. It is time to worship God. It is time to prepare for the end time. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the honor, Lord. You are a faithful God. Lord, I just want to pray for each and everyone who is online right now. Even some people who are going to watch this video on Kemif Online, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that as the word of God is going to be preached, as it continues to be preached, while least we can preach it. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. We are not going to... I pray we are not going to waste this word. I pray we are not going to make jokes of the word of God. I pray that the Spirit of God will age and nudge us to get serious, to get running our race, to get equipped, to get empowered in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is not a time for jokes. It's not a time to please each other. It's a time to preach the truth of the gospel. You know, the devourer is there. He comes and is roaring. He's looking for who to devour. But you are going to work on making your calling sure, studying the word of God, meditating on it day and night. And the Holy Spirit will help you to flee away from every appearance of evil in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I will leave you with the word to know that salvation is for free. For many are called, but few are chosen. But the good news is, if ever you find yourself receptive to the word of God, consider yourself blessed. Consider yourself blessed. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to the love of God. And hold on to the hope. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>